Hi, I'm Paul Kilgan from GK Tuition, and in this video I want to talk to you about algebra, a manipulation of formula. Now the question we're going through here is 2018 paper 1 question 9. In this question they're talking about a tsunami, but ultimately they've just given you a random equation with three different variables, S, G and D. So if they tell you two of them, you can find the third one. They've told you that G is 9.8 meters per second squared, and that the depth is 2,000 meters, they've asked you to find S, the speed. So, my advice is always write out your formula, write out the information you've been given, and then it's completely foolproof. If you write this and then you write that, it's, it's foolproof. Now all I have to do is sub in. Instead of G, I put in 9.8. Instead of D, I put in 2,000. You plug it into your calculator, and the speed works out as 140 meters per second. Okay, A part 2 is a direct continuation from A part 1. In A part 1, they told me that if it start, I worked out that if the depth is 2,000 meters, G is 9.8, that the corresponding speed is 140 meters per second. I'm now given the same scenario. I'm told that this happens 400 kilometers away from land. And I'm asked to work out how long is it going to take for this tsunami to reach the land. So I know the speed of the tsunami and I know the distance away from land, if I know the speed and I know the distance, I'm able to work out how long it's going to take. So you should think of your distance speed time triangle. If you're looking for time, you cover time, that means it's distance divided by speed. So to work out how long it's going to take for this tsunami to reach land, it's the time will be equal to the distance divided by the speed. But you have to be careful with your units here, because they've given you the distance in kilometers, and you have the speed in meters meters per second versus kilometers. So obviously I need to change my distance into meters. Kilometers, kilo stands for a thousand. So to convert from kilometers to meters, you have to multiply by a thousand. 400 kilometers multiplied by a thousand, that's the same as 400,000 meters. So I know the distance away from land is 400,000 meters. And I know the speed of this tsunami is 140 meters per second. So if I divide speed into distance, that'll tell me how long it's going to take. If you plug that into your calculator, it works out as 2857. But you need to recognize that that is in seconds, because speed was in meters per second. So that means it's, it's going to take, take 2857 seconds before it reaches the land. But the question asked you to get this in meters, to get this in minutes. In order to get this in minutes, to go from seconds to minutes, you need to divide by 60. So in this case, I need to divide this one by 60. 2,857 seconds divided by 60, that's equivalent to 47.6 minutes. And it asked you to give it to the nearest minute. So if this tsunami occurred 400 kilometers away from land, it would take approximately, or to the nearest minute, it would take 48 minutes before the tsunami reaches land. So your final answer there is 48 minutes. You just have to be very careful with your units in that question. Okay, so for B part 1, we're going back to just this formula, S equals root G multiplied by D. And we're asked to make D the subject of the equation. Or we're asked to get D in terms of S and G. That basically just means get D on its own on one side and everything else to the other side. At the moment, S is in terms of G and D. I need to go the other way around. So you need to ask yourself, what's the immediate complication? Clearly, the immediate complication here is the third. And in order to get rid of this square root, you need to square both sides. If you square the right-hand side, the third will be gone. But if you're going to square the right-hand side, you also have to square the left-hand side. So the left-hand side, if you square the left-hand side, it just becomes S squared. If I square the right-hand side, if I squared that, the squared and the square root would just cancel each other out, which means that I'm just going to be left with G multiplied by D. And now I need to try and get D on its own. That's G multiplied by D. So in order to, bring, to get the G on the other side, or in order to get rid of the G on the right-hand side, I need to divide both sides by G. If you divide the right-hand side by G, you'll just be left with D. If you divide the left-hand side by G, you'll be left with S squared divided by G. So your final answer there is that D is equal to S squared divided by G. Okay, B part 2 says to hence or otherwise 
find the depth of a tsunami that would reach a speed of 55 meters per second. So, so I can use this formula, D in terms of S and G, which means they've told me G, they've told me S, so it's relatively easy to find D. G is still 9.8, and they've told me that in this scenario, the speed is 55. If I know the speed is 55 and I know G, I can just sub in and work out the value of D. If you plug it into your calculator, it ends up as 308.67. But it asks you to leave this to the nearest meter, so you round up and your final answer is 309 meters. If the tsunami occurred at 309 meters under the water, it would reach a speed of 55 meters per second. Now I hope all of that makes sense. If there's anything you're unsure of there, as always, just send me an email or let me know in class and I'll try and explain it a little bit differently.